Hello, Eurovision fam. Uh, this, oh, of course, my cat starts meowing just right over there. But uh, <laughs> welcome to the Eurovision fam official YouTube channel. Today, we have a special treat. I'm going to be interviewing Mr. Christian Ingebrigtsen from <laughs> the Norwegian National Selection. He has the song Wonder of the World. And um, just providing a little background on kind of uh, the situation we have going on here. Mr. Ingebrigtsen here is the son of Norwegian musical great Stein Ingebrigtsen. And uh, he was part of the pop group A1 uh, from the UK where um, he first started to build his international career. And uh, Mr. Ingebrigtsen, I also understand that you spent a number of years uh, in the theater and also as a solo artist. As of late, you have submitted quite a number of entries to Melody Grand Prix, including 2020's Norwegian entry uh, that won Melody Grand Prix um, <clears throat> Attention by Ulrike and uh, this last year Own Yourself by Dinaya and Eyes Wide Open by Rain Alexander. Uh, yeah, how are, how are you doing? How have things just been with uh, this whole process for you in um, the Norwegian selection so far this year? Well, thanks for that great introduction and thanks for having me on your show. Um, you know, I'm, I'm, uh, I've been a fan of, of Eurovision uh, Song Contest since I was a kid and Growing up, uh, it wasn't until 1985, I was about seven years old when, uh, or eight, almost eight years old when I was allowed to stay up for the in entirety, because this is a long show, you know, when the Eurovision mm -hmm. Song Contest final, it ends quite late and I was allowed to stay up and see the whole thing. And that year, Norway won with Bobby Sox, a song called Let It Swing. Let it swing, and, let it rock and roll. Yep, that's right, amazing yeah. song. <laughs> Uh, and I, I was immediately hooked and <clears throat> I bought all the cassettes. I had them on, on, on audio cassette mm -hmm. and all the, all the participants from, from all the years. And I was really excited about and my, my dream was born that year, uh, not to be the artist, but to be the songwriter. I wanted to, to write the Norwegian entry for the Eurovision Song Contest. And I've been trying <clears throat> quite a mm -hmm. few times uh, since. Uh, I, I have four runners up for Norway, I won for, for Finland as well, and uh, finally won in 2020 with Ulrika, as you said, and then Eurovision was cancelled, I couldn't believe it, so yeah. I still have to, <laughs> the dream's still alive, I still have to try to write the winning song for Norway and, and actually represent Norway in the Eurovision Song Contest. So I'm still, I'm in it this year, but this year mm -hmm. with my own song and, and as an artist myself, I think that's uh, um, a lot scarier than just being the songwriter. But on the other hand, it's you know it's a lot more fun as well because you get to to be a part of the whole circus in another way. Because even though it's a songwriting competition, it doesn't really feel like the songwriters get a lot of uh, credit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, but um, I mean, I still love it, and I'm I'm really happy to um, to be a part as as an artist this year and. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm, you never know because there's so many great songs and so many uh, participants. You never know mm -hmm. if you're gonna, you know, bring it home that year. But uh, you know, I I hope I have a chance. And um, and first and foremost, I think it's just a wonderful platform uh, to to present your songs, um, you know, uh, out there to to people around the world who might not normally hear your music. Um, it's, it's, and also. Out of all the TV shows out there today, it's one of the few ones for artists where you can do what you're, what you do. I'm mm -hmm. doing my song in, in the style I usually do, <clears throat> while a lot of the other TV shows you can be on, you have to do something you can't do, like cooking or <laughs> dancing or yeah, you know, some other extraneous other talent. <laughs> yeah, or sing in other genres you don't normally operate in, or sing mm -hmm. other genres. So I. Yeah, I love it for so many reasons, but that that's definitely one of the top reasons why I love it so much. Awesome, awesome. Thank you for that answer. So I do want to know, Wonder of the World is a very gentle, intimate, orchestral kind of ballad. Very romantic, I have to say. Very in line with a musical theater sound. I have to ask, was this song written for someone? And if so, whom? Huh. Well, it, it actually is. I got engaged uh, last year. Oh, congratulations. <laughs> Uh, thank you. So I, I wrote it for my girlfriend, uh, and she actually kind of um, she hinted at. She said, "All all your love songs are about love going wrong," 
Because if I look at my career and like even with songs like Every Time for A A1 and mm -hmm. um, most of the songs aren't about happy love. <laughs> and so I realized, hey, I need to write that. And, and, you know, for the first time in my life, I, you know, I found someone I want to share the rest of my life with. And, uh, love is actually going quite well. Uh, so uh, it's a perfect time to write a song. And I didn't write it for Eurovision. I actually wrote the song for my next album. <clears throat> oh, wow. Uh, uh, with one of my, 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 uh, my songwriting partners for the last 15 years, Michael Oakes, uh, who's been working out in Nashville uh, for a long time. And, and uh, so we, and we've also been involved in, in songwriting projects for other artists around the world, taking us around the world. So a lot of these places I sing about in the song, uh, we've been there and we've been there together, me and Michael. Um, oh, like, like the Taj Mahal, Petra, all those places that you mentioned. Petra, <laughs> New York, Rome. Actually, Taj Mahal is the only place we haven't been. Like, oh, I'm wow. going to go there, but it's just a place that we wanted to go. Hmm. But especially, you know, our trip to the Middle East and Petra was one of the main inspirations for the songs. And, and we were talking about how, you know, you can travel the world and see all these amazing places, but if you don't have anyone to share those experiences with, it kind of loses uh, a lot of this, you know, ah, well, we yeah. think like that. I wish I could share this moment with someone, <laughs> a special someone. Um, and also, obviously, the song <clears throat> is in, in its core about like, out of all the, the greatest world wonders around, you know, there's there's no wonder greater than, you know, to be loved and, and, and loving someone. Um, mm -hmm. and, greatest wonder of them all in, uh, in life and so um yeah that's that's what the song is about and it's it's a love song and i oh, love that is incredibly sweet <laughs> <laughs> thank you no it's 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 not it, it's it's it sounds simpler than it really is it's it's a journey through key changes and um and 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 how i i like chord sequence to be a little bit surprising but it but you wouldn't know it until you sit down and play it. I want it to sound simple, mm -hmm. even though it's not. And I think we, we managed to do that with this melody and I'm really proud. And also we got uh, a good friend from Finland, uh, Henrik Tala on board uh, um, to, to complete the song. And he's got a lot of experience in, in the Eurovision Song Contest. He wrote the winning song for Norway with Kaino a few years back. Oh, wow. Yeah, so it's, <laughs> it's uh, incredible. combined is, is a great team and I'm mm -hmm. really proud of the song. Mm. One thing I did notice when I was hearing the song for the first time, it kind of did give me the air of um, Amar Pelos Dois, so uh, the Portuguese winner of 2017. I kind of saw, like, the first kind of um, initial listen that I got from it, like, it kind of brought me into that similar world. So I'm, I, I'm kind of intrigued to just kind of hear your process now and how uh, that came to fruition essentially, which uh, more or less brings me to my next question. When you were writing the song, uh, what, what was that process like? Well, first of all, it's a big, big compliment. I think the greatest Eurovision winner of all time is that Portuguese winner. I mean, oh, that wow. Was just an incredible song. And, mm -hmm. uh, um, you know, I think he even said something about it from stage when he wanted like this, you know, it's about just music. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's great that just pure music, a great song can win without all the stuff around it, which is what I was trying to do with this song. Uh, I want it like, like to me, a great song is a song that you can just sit on the piano or with a guitar and you can play it and it moves you, it, it makes you feel something. That's when you have a great song and then you can add the production and all the other stuff. Um, if you have to have the production in order for it to be a cool song or a great song, I don't think the melody is strong enough or the lyrics are strong. I think, you know, you've got to have that song in its core. And I, even though I do love the whole circus around Eurovision, I think, um, you know, I want to represent that kind of song that's about the music and the purity. And I want the song to do the talking. Uh, so I'm just going to do it behind a grand piano uh, for my performance as well. And, and hopefully, you know, enough people like that. Uh, to <laughs> it through. But it's, um, you know, the, to answer your question, the thought process behind it went like for all the songs that I've submitted for other artists and myself, 
I've always said, let's not try to write a winning song for the Eurovision. Ah, oh, okay. Most likely fail. You know, let's just, uh, you know, let's take your talent um, and your style of music and, and 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 show that off to you know the best we can to the audience that what this wonderful platform we can show off you. And uh, so how you know we, I've been trying to write songs that show off the voices like for Ulrike. Uh, to show off her voice and because she's got a spectacular voice, you know. Um, and uh, in my case, I just wanted, you know, one of those melodies that I've been had in my drawer for years that I knew I was going to do at some point anyway, and I wrote it for this album. And then that's what I want to do in the Eurovision. I want to do a song that's me mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> and the way I write and how, what I like. So, and then if it wins, that would be a huge bonus. But uh, first of all, I just want to, you know, get my music out there to an even bigger audience. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. So um, we talked a little bit about uh, your first memories of Eurovision and kind of just what Bobby Sox's impact was for you. Uh, what other entries from your country would you say would be ones that stood out to you? Either this professionally or personally. Yeah, uh, Norwegian entries. Oh, before for Eurovision. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I, I really like the Kino uh, song that really mm -hmm. did well. Um, but before that, I think, uh, uh, I mean, I can go all the way back. I mean, there's a song called Fodvor Jod, which I thought was an amazing, beautiful song. Fodvor Jod. Like, yeah, so you heard that, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> da, 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 da. yeah. Oh, yeah, that song is so good. <laughs> yeah. The Secret Garden um, song, mm. uh, which I think is just, Again, it's just music. It's just a beautiful melody, mm -hmm. um, and I think Rolf Lerland is one of my my biggest heroes um, out of all the Eurovision um, heroes out there because uh, he's he's written so many classic melodies. Uh, saying that, like out of all the all the the best songs ever, like I mentioned the Portuguese one, which I, mm -hmm. I think is great, um, but. I, I used to always love when I was growing up. I went to a, a secondary school for music, and uh, so we were all music geeks. And we uh, every every year when there was a Eurovision final, we would dress up as our favorite Eurovision what? artist, and sing the songs before watching the show. Oh, that's so cool! <laughs> I was always Johnny Logan, and I would sing "Hold Me Now," which I think is a fantastic. <laughs> <album>. <laughs> Oh yeah, definitely. And so you'd just be wearing the white. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, no, there are so many uh, good ones. And, and mm -hmm. from recent years, I mean, obviously the, the Swedish uh, uh, entry from, I think 2013, I think it's been uh, that many years. It was, um, um, what was that, Euphoria? No, is that uh, Robin Stromberg was uh, 2013, if maybe that's what you're talking about. No, I th uh, mm. Euphoria. Oh yeah, that was uh, 2012, <laughs> Lorraine Euphoria. Oh, okay, so even Sweden, longer. Yeah. <laughs> oh my gosh. I mean, it's, it's um, time flies so quickly, it's ridiculous. Oh yeah, definitely. <laughs> I, there's so many players, and I, there's so many great, great participants, both from mm -hmm. Norway and around the world. Um, and uh, it makes stars as well. Can you believe that, you know, Celine Dion, ABBA, I mean, some of the greatest, artists of all time have been part of that show so mm -hmm. um, even nowadays with a uh, monskin like you you see them coming up all of a sudden and it's just like yeah. it kind of like brings you back to wait no, uh eurovision it still is this platform where where um you can come as an artist really with any kind of background and just like as uh, just like you were saying as long as you provide something that's authentically yourself then that's what could carry potentially you to do well, not necessarily for the commitment of being a part of that show necessarily. Yeah, no, absolutely. Let me see here. Do you have any dream collaborations? Huh. Yeah, I mean, David Foster would be one I'd love to work <laughs> with. Uh, he's kind of in that world that I like uh, production wise. And, mm -hmm. and as a writer, he's, he's a legend. Uh, with current artists, I mean, um, it's hard. I mean, it, I'd love to do something with Kygo, or someone like in EDM. Or ah. like that. <laughs> um, 
I mean, it's, yeah, I guess those are the first two that come to mind. Medium, that would be a very interesting uh, kind of angle to take. It's it's not uh, what I'm just generally used to hearing from you, or at least, uh, or at least, yeah, how I'm just more recently become familiar with you. But um, I have one more question here. So uh, among your co-competitors, which other song or songs stood out to you or would you call your favorite? This year. Mm -hmm. I think it's very difficult. Um, I don't think there's like one song to me that's that stands out as the most, you know, the best song or something like that. But because they're, they're also different, it depends on you know what people want this year. Mm -hmm. If you want a really fun, ridiculous, up-tempo song, then the Wolf song, uh, Subwoofer. Uh, <laughs> Is, is quite fun and, and ridiculous. Mm -hmm. um, if you want a beautiful song, I think that Elsie Bay song is, is really, is, is a beautiful song and I know it's one of the favorites. Um, but there are others as well. I'm, I'm just forgetting it right now, but uh, I, I quite like the, the really young uh, contestants. Uh, Mary Bella Money Bunny. <laughs> I don't right. know how you pronounce it in English. <laughs> By the way, your pronunci pronunciation of my surname was excellent. I was very impressed. Oh, thank, thank you. you. <laughs> it's not a very easy name. Even for Norwegians, they don't know how to say it. So, great uh, Jeg kan forstå lite norsk. Jeg snakker lite, lite norsk. <laughs> oh, wow, wow. Well, there you, yeah. go. there you go. It's really exciting to see because uh, these other participants, just as well, they do provide something very different. I do feel like this MGP year has a, a quite a bit more variety than I've seen in the last um, years with MGP. And that is uh, in terms of genre, in terms of performance style, in terms of uh, performer intention. This is turning out to be quite an extraordinary show, if I do say so myself. Yeah, it was a good year. A lot of great mm -hmm. songs and a lot of great singers. So a lot of good vocal performances. And um, so it's, I mean, you never know who's going to, that's the thing. You can just do your best and you never know who's going to release something the same year as you. So, you, you know, mm -hmm. last year, no one stood a chance against Tix, who has so many uh, millions of followers uh, on Spotify. And, uh, and oh, like, yeah. <laughs> on the world. So, um, yeah, like I remember in, uh, I think when, when A1 released Caught in the Middle, which is one of our, you know, the songs that people remember from us, mm -hmm. it would have been number one in the UK charts 51 out of 52 weeks that that year but that one week we released it enrique iglesias uh launched hero so we, oh we no <laughs> <laughs> so you never know who's gonna and 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 this year i feel there are several songs that can that could you know end up representing norway and, and it's all about you know who can uh get people to vote as well mm -hmm. you know and i'm not the kind that very comfortable going out there begging for votes. <laughs> <laughs> I, I hope people will listen, to, discover the song, and listen for themselves, and and um, and that I get a chance to represent Norway. Um, mm -hmm. Either way, I'm proud to just be part of it. Oh yeah, of course. And like you said, at the end of the day, it really is all about the music. It's about uh, what you walk away with, and just kind of like that feeling that it gave you. So thank you for reinforcing the message that. Yes, the, if, if you want to uh, be able to not just do well, but provide that experience, kind of just like that perfect three minutes, then why not do it with 100% of your heart? So <laughs> thank you for sharing that with us. And once again, thank you for joining me on this interview for Eurovision fam. We are so excited to see you perform. And uh, can you tell the audience which uh, heat you'll be performing in that we could um, see that sneak peek of uh, before you <clears throat> uh, perform the song to compete? Yes, so it's coming up this Saturday. Awesome. Our <laughs> final two. I'm one of the lucky participants who's been pre-selected to be directly in the final. So the 19th of February, I'll be there too. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, this coming Saturday is, is, is my turn to show the song uh, to the public and to perform it. So I'm very excited about that and also quite scared. <laughs> <laughs> but one of the great things about this song, I gotta I just remember this as well. Like I always said that uh, the best thing, like real true success is if I can leave this world a little bit of a better place than 
it would have been if I wasn't here. Mm. And so I, um, uh, you know, more than uh, how many people stream my song or come to my concerts, uh, I've always measured success in if my music meant something to someone. You know, uh, those, uh -huh. I get you know feedback either at my concerts or or someone sends me an email or a Facebook message or um, that you know I was going through this and your song helped me through it thank you so much I mean that that's so uh, precious to me I, I become so grateful and I <clears throat> you know this song is a love song it's, mm -hmm. I hope it can inspire proposals and <laughs> use weddings or whatever because you know that that would be the greatest uh, compliment to me if someone used the song in their wedding for their dance or something like that but I already got a message from a lady saying that um, she had um, planned to leave her husband and uh, and when this song came uh, she felt the message you know sort of spoke to her and she decided to do to stay and uh, she mm. said she basically said thank you for saving our marriage and I'm like, well, oh, it's wow. already, <laughs> it is already worth it all of it you know from that one message and that I'm, I'm so grateful for that wow so you're kind of working as a little bit of a wonder worker too <laughs> <laughs> yeah well music like you said it's all about it's all about emotions and, and, and making people feel something mm -hmm. And uh, I hope, you know, this song can inspire love and actions of love when they hear it. Oh, well, thank you so much for that. It definitely inspired a feeling of love within me. And I'm sure by the time we see it performed on Saturday, a lot of people are going to feel that same love too. So once again, thank you so much for being a part of this. Best mm -hmm. of luck on Saturday. Break a leg. And yeah, can't wait to see you shine. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thanks for having me.